Welcome back, everyone. Surface Wave Podcast, episode 35. Today, we have a banger episode. We got a bunch of topics, um, a bunch of questions. We are joined today by the amazing artist, entrepreneur, the talented young Neves. Yo, yo, what's good, man? What up, brother, man? How you doing? How you living? I'm good, bro. I I, I appreciate you for, for coming out here, man. Shit, man. I appreciate everything we've been doing, too, man. Uh, a lot of big moves on the way, for real. A ton. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that. Um, how's everyone doing? How you doing, Lalo? Doing good, dude. Um, busy week. Um, honestly, we had practice and I got hit with that ball, bro. <laughs> I got hit right in the like oh, ribs. Bro, do you have a picture? No, I don't. Oh, I, was I wish I did because now it doesn't look as bad, but it was like legit, like the size of it, like bigger than a softball. Just... Lalo got hit twice consecutively. Yeah, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> once, once in the ribs, and then once in the knee. It Whoa. seemed like it was on purpose too. But yeah, shout out to Martin. Shout little, out to Team. Little scumbag. Fan of the show. Big fan. But yeah, dude, other than that, um, good. Yeah? Yeah. That's good, man. Living good, bro. Nate, how you doing, bro? I'm doing great, everyone. Thank you for asking. Hello. I like, I like the new Look at the fucking mustache like, on that boy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I like the handlebars you got going on. Handlebar, bro. call call me Chuck Liddell. Where'd that even come from? I feel like I just, it came out of nowhere. Uh, the stash or yeah, Chuck Liddell? No, <laughs> the mustache. You just dude. woke up one day, bro. It was there. I woke up and I was just feeling different, man. I was just like, you know what? It's time. It's time. It's time for the stash. I think I feel like growing a dad's stash today. <laughs> I like it, man. Hell um, yeah. So we've been talking about Young Neves for uh, a couple episodes. We've been talking about the videos, the photo shoots. The, mm -hmm. um, he got some shows coming up. And we're actually blessed to finally get him onto the show to just just talk about everything that we got going on, man. Um, we You just dropped Summer Vibes. Um we could play a snippet of it. Yeah, we let's might, do that. We yeah, might get copywritten, sure. but it's honestly, it's worth it, bro. Um, before we play this, though, what does this song mean to you? Um, really, man, it was just something to hype people up before the uh, the tape that I'm about to drop, this little project uh, called Every Emotion. It's, so yeah. I really wanted to just get people hyped up and ready. Uh, a little something with like, I needed something with summer vibes for sure. So I was just like, fuck it. We'll just do a little freestyle um, to a super dope beat that i thought gave me some summer vibes and then Definitely. we just went out there and they shot the flick and so. here we are yes sir i'm excited for it man it's it's been blowing up I yeah mean, man it's doing numbers man it has i think actually it's been a little over 24 now but uh i was hoping to hit that 1k in 24 but i mean it's going up it's doing numbers for sure right there everyone who's watching this make sure to go stream this let's get that 1k um i'll just tease this a little bit and then we could talk about the the process the creating process of all this yeah. but, um little snippet young neve summer vibes bro honestly it's so fire it's so sick the vibe overall man is just yeah for the audio only listeners we are playing young neve summer vibes official music video 2k 21 summer vibes hooping on niggas under them city lights rolling spliffies sipping henny that shit get me right niggas envy can't get too friendly with them type of guys because they the type to sit and watch you and plot on your demise but i ain't worried about these niggas i'm like let that boy trash i really go about my business and i hear pressure make diamonds all this weight will be my witness i ain't talking about product because i know niggas from that lifestyle and them niggas got caught up can't be worried about that right now and that's word to my mama so yeah um i could play the whole song it's a pretty short song but it's yeah at, at the end of it it says to be continued do you want to explain why we put that there yeah so i figure man if people go crazy enough um we we might go back out there i'll do like a second verse to this joint or we do another beat you know with like the same type of concept but uh i really just wanted to see how this shit did and it looks like everyone's fucking with this so Hell looks yeah, like we dude. might have to jump back out there and do that I'm down, bro. Yeah. Um, if this video was shot um, by Wave Cartel, me and Nikki uh, were the ones who filmed this. Nikki got the second angles. Yes, sir. Um, for the new listeners, Nikki uh, is an artist of Wave Cartel, co-owner of Wave Cartel. We just dropped episode 34. We, we sat down with him, um, got to know his journey mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. But this is one of many. We got so much more content coming, bro. Yeah. On the car ride here, we were just chopping it up about these next upcoming moves and... You, you were talking about 
you got some stuff going on in Spokane. Yeah, man. So uh, I think I just got like the approval to do my first headline show at the Spokane Knitting Factory, which is like huge because it's like the biggest the biggest venue in Spokane. So and it's where I've done a lot of my big <coughs> my big shows and stuff. As far as that, it's in the hometown. So uh, I'm gonna I'm looking to do like some type of local um, Northwest type of festival. With a whole bunch of dope Northwest artists, I want to put on there. That'll be fire, and then, bro. Um, you know, do our thing. But yeah, man, I was really blessed to hear that. Um, I got a couple of shows, you know, beyond that coming up. Uh, like when one with Ludacris, um, that's gonna be August twenty eighth out in Lewiston, Idaho. And then I got another show July tenth coming up in Reno. It's kind of like a private event, um, but yeah. I got blessed with the opportunity, so I'm gonna head out there and do that. I think that's dope that that. Um that ludicrous show still is is happening. Yeah, man. Because COVID and stuff. Yeah, so like that shit was fuck. I think it was supposed to happen like a little over a year ago. Yeah. And it got canceled because of COVID, of course. And we hadn't he- heard no no word at all. And I was on a vacation with my family, and we were eating dinner, <clears throat> and I got the message like, "Do you still want to rock that show with Luda?" And I was like, "Yeah, most definitely. Like, I'm yeah. I'm stoked to do it. You know. So yeah, I'm really blessed with that opportunity. I'm excited." Damn, I'm excited so cool, too, dude. man. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to you. That's awesome. Also, congratulations on headlining at the knit, the knit, dude. That's super cool, bro. Yeah, I appreciate that, bro. I'm super excited, man. I'm trying to do something. Uh, hopefully, I can get them to let me do something out here in Boise as well mm-hmm. at the knit there. So That'll be fire, bro. They got uh, they got Kevin Gates coming out here to the knit. Mm. They got the game. Not the game, sorry. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Coming to Fort Hall, Idaho, bro. Oh, Fort wow. Hall. I don't even know where Fort Hall is. <laughs> yeah. They actually have the game going to uh, Quest Casino over there, kind of close to where I'm from, too, Spokane. Damn, so. Bro. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Dang. It's the start of the takeover, bro. Here we go. Yeah, exactly, man. The yeah, calm they, before the a lot storm. of shit coming up. So. And, they're, and they're opening them doors again, man. Yeah. Like, shit, yeah I, I remember thinking. you hit me up about a year and a half ago for that Luda show, bro. Or was it... I think it was for like E40 or uh, Too Short. Yeah. Some sort of event that was happening in Boise. And of course, that got canceled. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm excited, bro. I'm about to hit the ground running too, man. I, with with these touring gigs and stuff, man. I, I didn't really didn't realize like how much I took it for granted to be able to go to concerts. Yeah, Something man. as simple as going outdoors. Like just yeah. to have it taken away from you. It, it make now that we have it back, bro. I'm gonna do as much as I can. Yeah, going facts, back bro. Outdoors. Um, me and my boy were actually speaking about that shit, and uh, we were like, "Yo, it's crazy." Like when when you get caught in the moment of like reaching milestones and shit, you don't feel like you're accomplishing shit or yeah. like you're living your dream in that moment. Yeah, definitely. But when them doors got closed and you couldn't do shows, and like you realized, like like you really couldn't do nothing at that point. I realized, yeah. like, yeah, I was somewhat living. Yeah, you know, a part of that dream. So yeah, it's pretty dope. Just out there doing the fucking thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Makes you take a step back and just really respect. Like, we all are in the journey. We're all in the mud right now, man. But it just means more to to do these shows and to travel and to be able to do it because it's a privilege. Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's an opportunity, but it's still a privilege at the end of the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but talking about music, before the music and stuff, um, what what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you always want to be a rapper? or? Um, no. So, like, I always wanted to do something with music. Like, I grew up with my uh, my pops played the guitar. He was in, like, bands and shit. And my big brother, he played the guitar. And um, he taught me how to play bass when I was younger. And we, and we just, you know, we, we had, like, our little thing going. And uh, it was just always a love for music. You know what I'm saying? So... I'll say about ninth grade, I started like writing poems and shit and like got got fell in love with like the rhyme scheme and, and all that type of shit. And then that's when I started trying to like rhyme and do songs. And then my homies fucked with it and it all just, you know, it, it took off from there. Damn, that's sick, bro. So you're you come from a musical family. Yeah, yeah. Very. Yeah. All my like my my uncle played the drums. My my dad played guitar like. My my grandpa was was a little bit of a singer. Like, oh really? You know, Damn, so. that's hella cool. Yeah. Did they um did they ever release any music? Uh yeah. So like my dad, man, he has a lot of music um that he, that he released. Like their band was called like Muddy Gumbo back in the day. That's a fire ass <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, it was pretty fire. And uh, they opened up for a lot of like dope dope artists and like did a lot of cool shit in their day. And so that's what inspired me to obviously yeah go crazy. That's hella cool, that's dope, dude. Bro. Yeah. Um. 
Can do you play any instruments? Yeah, like I play the bass. Uh, I still play the guitar every now and again, just because like ever since my brother passed away, R.I.P. Andrew James. Um, I just try to like you know make his name live on and do the shit that he would do. Um, yeah. So yeah, I play the guitar every now and again, man. I still play the the bass. I don't play it as much as I should, but I still tap into that shit. Yeah, man, that's deep. Yeah. Um, what are some inspirations when it comes to making music? Like, what what do you got to tap into or what, what's your process? Um, man, really, I just like to like, I, I'm a, I don't like, uh, in the creative process, I'm, I, I like to be alone. Like, even though when I go do my shows and I'm, you know, sharing my content with people, like, I don't really get nervous about it. Mm-hmm. But when I'm creating it, I don't like, I don't like anyone to be really in that process a lot of yeah. times. So, um, I, I like to like be alone, you know, catch a vibe. I like to, uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Just, just a loner in a sense when i when i create i'm like that too bro. <laughs> yeah yeah when i have like uh you know get togethers with artists and stuff when we're like recording verses or doing like a giant fucking track i don't record until like everyone dips out it's weird man like yeah. i could catch a vibe and i'm vibing out and stuff but i can't i, I kind of feel like i really can't get into it until i'm like solo and yeah you know like i can i, I could be overthinking it but no for sure yeah. and i think that like i do too um uh, but I just like I like when I'm in the in the studio like I have all my people come through the studio and I'll record and shit like but when I'm writing and shit like that shit's uh that shit's like personal to me. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, that's sick. It's like you make it like super intimate, right? Yeah. It's, it's, so it's like coming straight from the soul. Mm-hmm. I get that, man. You don't want anybody like you keep it special that way, right? It's, yeah. It's, it's a special moment for you. What yeah, do, exactly. What do you think comes easier for you, the writing process or the actual recording process? Um Man, that's hard to say. That's a good question because uh, I feel like it used to be the recording process because I, I uh, grew up around like a lot of people that um, like when I would go to the studio with, you know, James Hill, which he's phenomenal, uh, you know, just great guy. But he would teach me a lot of shit. And so uh, I feel like I've, I I learned the skill of like recording and like doing that on a on a dope level young Mm -hmm. but i feel like my lyrics and shit are just getting to a point where that shit's like becoming easy for me um to actually write something that's dope rather than just like filling filling out with rhymes yeah no your music definitely speaks for itself bro like for the the audience the the new people that are going to be getting tapped in with your music i 100 percent, and i've told you this outside the podcast just linking up with you man like I 100% believe in your sound. It's Yeah, I appreciate that, bro, for real. It's refreshing to be honest with you, bro, because like a lot of music that's coming out in this era, it seems like it's it's kind of mirrored from yeah. like what's mm-hmm. catchy and what's going to sell. And I I as a fan who is a fan of hip hop, listening to your music, I feel like there I don't know, there's something more to it than just a catchy bop and a catchy beat, you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, most definitely. You got to go above and beyond when you do those kind of beats too. You got to actually cuz those kind of beats and that kind of style kind of sells itself. Yeah. So you actually mm-hmm. got to go above and beyond. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, most definitely. Um I feel like I don't know, man. I've always kind of been more of like a lyrics type dude rather than like the new age type shit where yeah. like people fall in love with beats and like the sound of people's voice with the auto tunes and shit. And like, mm-hmm. I fuck with it too. Like I, I like that shit, but um, I've always just been a person that like, like just likes to be different um, and like to like keep it special as far as like what I'm saying means a lot to me. Every bar rather than, yeah, you can tell, you know? Yeah. yeah. You can tell for sure. I feel like you like, you respect the, your music more, right? I, and then that, do you think that like comes from like being in a music fan? Like you seeing your dad's like his love for music and your brother's love for music. Like you th- probably treat the game a whole different way than most artists out there right now. Yeah, most definitely, man. Like I feel like a lot of people, um, like whatever, however way they got into music, uh, you know that's dope, and I'm sure it means a lot to them. But like being that my pops was in the music, my brother who's gone was in the music, and all that shit, it kind of like feels like there's nothing else for me you know like i gotta do this um that's just kind of like my mentality with it so oh yeah man um kind of shifting from just the music process i want to talk about concerts and stuff yeah if you guys go to this man's instagram page he has opened up for some of the the craziest names like lil wayne Nas, wiz khalifa like before we talk about like 
Ice Cube. Yeah. Bro, oh that's... damn, bro. Yeah, we did. The, the, the list uh, goes on. What's crazy though is the universe is just like like I actually met you two years ago, bro. Yeah. At the Knitting Factory, um, one of my artists had an opportunity to perform with Vito Ot. Mm-hmm. Um, he used to go by Young Verb, um, and I actually saw you there in the backstage, bro, with your with your crew. Yeah. And it's just it's just crazy to think that like our paths crossed two years later. You yeah. You know what I'm saying like. Yeah, man. It's dope, man. Like yeah. I remember seeing you. I remember Vito chopping it up with you, and I'm just I was just filming and stuff. And you're like, what did you say? You're like, how much for you to film our set or something like that? And yeah. at the time, I was filming for Vito set, so I couldn't try to do both at once, bro. Yeah. But I just thought that was crazy, <laughs> man. Because two years down the road, now you know I had the opportunity to film a video for you, and it was yeah. And here we are. It's right? dope. It's honestly like, and I was telling you in the car, man, like. We're putting so much work into our craft and to actually have a platform and to have people see it and view it just means so much to us. Like, yeah, most definitely. It means a lot, bro. I mean, you were hoping for 1K in 24 hours just to see the 700 plays in less than 24 hours. I was just like, holy fuck, bro. Yeah, man. It's been love it's for sure, man. Yeah. And I appreciate that for real. Um, but yeah, man, like I, I feel like that's what that's what brought us back together was just the consistency of seeing each other grind, you know? Like, yeah, I know for sure. Um, a lot of people do this shit one day and then you don't hear from them for X amount of time and then they try to make their comeback or whatever the case may be. And and that, that makes sense as long as you're grinding. But you know what I mean? Like as far as the people who just ain't really, they don't, you know, like we wake up and go to sleep with this shit on our mind. Like some people I don't think are built like that. I don't think you sleep, bro. Oh, shit. To be honest with you. Yeah. You and I just be chopping it up to like 11 o'clock at night. And then <laughs> yeah. we're, we're back in DMs, bro, plotting at it's 7 right. in the morning, bro. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, it's It's hard to find people who have that same work mentality, man, because we still got, you know, our responsibilities and our jobs and, you know, but at the end of the day, like, it's like every day it's something else that we're plotting on and this feature or this show or this touring event or this music video like yeah it's hard to meet those kind of people man so like i said the universe is crazy and i i genuinely feel like it was it, it was in the universe's plan for our our, our past to cross again yeah and mm-hmm. and shout out to seth because he was the person who told you to come hit us up bro yeah and man that was seth. just off the love you know yeah yeah seth man shout out seth man he's uh he's that's crazy. my boy man he goes crazy he too yeah crazy, bro. i think like talking about like how you guys you know you the consistency i feel like a lot of people like just lack the passion for what they do like they see it as a hobby right and Mm -hmm. it it may be that for you guys as well but there's a lot of passion behind what your project that you push out and and the products that you're pushing which is that which like i said sets you guys aside from most people out there yeah and and it's easier to tap in when you see the passion you know and and the love and the and like i said once again like yeah. the respect for the craft that you're that you're doing you know what i mean yeah yeah i feel that too yeah i think Definitely. that's what i think that's what makes like a lot of people successful um like a lot of my favorite artists like they'll say it in their lyrics like once they got to a point or in their interviews whatever the case may be but once they got to a point where they like didn't care if they make it or break it they're going to be that same person yeah I think that's when you decide, like, okay, I'm just going to go harder than ever, and yeah. no one can really stop you at that point. I feel like it weeds out the loose ends, too, man. Like, yeah. this isn't cut out for everyone. Yeah, and most gonna definitely. There's going to be ups and downs, and it's going to fluctuate, but, like, it's either you can give up or you can keep persevering, bro. And I feel like that's what, for you as an artist, as a fan listening to your music, I feel like that's why you're, you're where you're at. And you're barely at the beginning of your career, too, man. Yeah. Like, these hits that you've put out, man, are just, they're something else. Yeah, I, man, I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, it's a long, like, obviously, it's just a beginning, a long way to go. Uh, a lot of a lot of better things to come, I'd hope. But uh, Definitely, man. But yeah. I did want to talk about your, so we talked about shows and stuff, but what would you say is your most memorable concert? Uh, I think the Cube one. That's Ice why Cube? I threw it out there. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was because it was a festival. It wasn't just like a like an Ice Cube show. So, like, it was Ice Cube. Um, it had the loonies, uh, it had, uh, corrupt, oh, damn. you know, it had like, um, uh, blue face, you know, which he was super popping at the time. So yeah, that whole, whole bunch of people were into that. Um, but yeah, man, it was just a crazy ass event and the biggest, like most successful event I've ever performed at. So that's why I would say it's my, my favorite. Yeah. Um, second to that would be the Wiz Khalifa on 420 yeah. just cause like, Wiz Khalifa 420. Like, <laughs> yeah. This shit was crazy. It all man. lines up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You were telling me about how when you finish your set and you 
pretty much path you cross paths with Wiz. Yeah, like man. He was coming so, on stage. Yeah, so How like was that? It was crazy, bro. So uh he was actually dripped out in this um Supreme like boxer fit. So he had like the little, you know, like the yeah, you know, like the boxers come out like the, the robe and stuff. Yeah, the pre okay, yeah. robe and yeah. shit. Or pre fight robe. And he had one of those on and like he he was coming out and uh like it was one of those things, bro, where like you just kinda like damn like one of one of my idols, of course. Like you just see him in the moment, and it's almost like I don't even know how to explain it, bro. It's just kind of like that awe feeling. And yeah, bro. Like I was going to to go through the curtain, and he was coming onto the stage through the curtain. And of course, like I just stepped out of the way, let him walk by. But yeah, it was crazy, man. It was it all happened so fast. I wish I could have like spoke, said something yeah. to him. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy either, uh, you know. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna ask you if there, if you could have relived that moment, what would you, what would you do different? I don't think I would have done anything different just because of the timing of it. Like, yeah, I feel like it would have been a little corny of me to like try to speak to him while he's entering the stage. No, you know for what I'm sure. Saying? Well, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Damn, I can imagine that was almost like an out of body experience, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I feel like I couldn't r- really react. But at the same time, like, what do you do? You know? Yeah. So. Like, what a surreal moment, bro. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I met I met my favorite artist in the world, bro. I met Cole. When he just dropped Forest Hills Drive, and I think about that. Yeah, moment. that shit is crazy. I mean, I think about it all the time, bro, because I feel like I could have done it different. Yeah, Talked both. But I, I would have to say both those last two albums by Cole. Both his last two, man, are like in my top five. Top tier. KOD. Top tier last for one, sure, bro. You wouldn't put Forest Hills in your top five. I, I fuck with Forest Hills, but I wasn't fully like a Cole fan. Um, it was actually like m- one of my boys. Uh, Devin, he took it. He took his life uh, a couple years back, and Damn. when he did like his goodbye videos, he was saying goodbye to me and one of them, and he was like telling me he wanted to have like some of his belongings and shit, and uh, he was listening to that album in the background, and so like that's when I started listening to like Deja Vu and like a couple Damn, tracks bro. off that oh, off that shit, and it hit different. Um, and that album, like that shit, means a lot to me, but. Yeah, it was from there that I'm like, yo, like, uh, like this next body of work and those next two just hit me like crazier just because I don't know. It was just crazy. Do you feel like the loss of your homies is pushing you to to just go harder? Yeah, most definitely, yeah. bro. Because uh, the thing about my 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 video seasons <clears throat> is uh, my boy Devin is the one in there that's like oh, doing man. the burnout on the on the motorcycle. Yeah. And uh, we shot that shit, man. And he was hyped on it. And before it even released, he had passed. And so it was like, but he was like helping me promote it up until, and he like had his whole plan, you know, like he had like this whole plan, like he he, he did a whole string of like posts on uh, Instagram and shit, like where he had the same hashtag, life is chaos, be kind. Yeah. And so like, I'm eventually going to get that shit tatted. But, uh, For sure. but yeah, bro. So like he had this whole plan and um, he, like he didn't even get to see that video, like when it was finally done. And I know he would have thought that shit was fire because he was big about his bikes and shit. Yeah. 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 That shit's heavy, man. That kind of makes me think about... So I had a family member who passed, bro. And he constantly... Every time he saw me, he was like, where's this? Where's my CD at? Where's my he always wanted a CD from me, bro. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to give him a CD after that moment, man. But it just kind of made me just like put in perspective. Like time is just... We don't... It's... It's not yeah. in our favor ever, bro. Nah. And it's just like those little moments for me. It's just like I got to just take more advantage of the time that I do have with them. Yeah, for real. But that's deep, man. Um, we have a couple more questions. Um, how long have you been making music? So, when did you first start? So, like I said, man, I was like in ninth grade when I when I became in this uh, when I like thought I was gonna become a rapper, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was hanging out with my boy Romello and uh, my homie Zach. And uh, we we created this group group called Limerick Set, and um, we like you know it was dope and like we didn't really accomplish much just because we were so young and like yeah. new to the shit like we never really like put out a body of work or like any projects or songs or nothing like that but uh, that's where it all started in in this nigga basement and we just wrote a whole bunch of music and um, you know had good times and then that branched off into me doing my own thing. And uh, over the time, like, I would say being, like, on the go, doing my shit uh, on the road, in the in the professional studio, doing, like, that type of thing for, like, the last five years. Mm-hmm. But, of course, like, yeah, ninth grade or so. And- How was your setup? Because we've asked this question to a lot <laughs> yeah. of our, our, 
our guests, <clears> and it's always been like a bougie ass setup when they first started. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So actually, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because now that you said that, <laughs> yo, actually, this shit's funny as fuck. So one of the first times I was recording, I was at my homie Frank's house. Uh, Frank Morgan, shout out, shout out, homie. Shout out, um, Frank. Yeah, shout out, Frank. Uh, we were over at his house, and uh, he had like a fucking. I think it was like a Slurpee cup, bro, that, <laughs> that we cut the top of the, or like the bottom, I guess, and flipped it on, on its, on his face. And in the top, we had the mic come out and it was like a blue, uh, like one of them cheap ass blue mics, bro. And, uh, yeah, we were recording on that. And, uh, I think we actually recorded this record with my homie, Robert. Um, it was like trying to live. The song was called like trying to live. And I think it's on his SoundCloud, but, uh, it was, it's actually like a crazy, like it's a crazy song with potential for what it was because we were so young we were still in high school and yeah. like we were recording on this fucking setup so yeah i love just, that i love asking yeah, artists back man that shit was crazy i love asking artists they still have their like first couple of tracks they ever recorded do you have any of those in a vault um, somewhere yeah man so like yeah i'm not gonna tell you where to find it <laughs> but uh yeah there's definitely a website that has a couple of my old shit and i'll go back there and play them and be like yo this is disgusting <laughs> like, <laughs> we're gonna put out feelers out there we're gonna find them bro yeah no I most definitely that, bro. i still have some too that are on youtube i'm just like fuck yeah bro it's like damn take it down please <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i thank god i changed my rap name so y'all y'all can't even find it can't them. even <laughs> find it nah yeah. it's exclusive i bet you someone could find it though I bet you someone out there can find our old our old tracks bro yeah if you yeah. find them send it to the dms yeah right. share them share, share them bro <laughs> Um, so we got some fan questions actually too. So this question came from Nikki. Yeah. He asked, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, so I, I would say like the best piece of advice that I've been given that I've like known to be the truth is, uh, like never let someone else tell you how to do your shit based on their their path because everyone's just so different. So like that, yeah. I always keep that in perspective when someone tells me like, yo, don't do this. Like I had to stop doing that. It's kind of like, well, everyone's different. Like, you know, like, I don't know. Not to say that like I'm better than anyone or anyone's better than anyone, but like what you do can, can work out, but it might not work for the next man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. So. It's all about trusting the process, man. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, no one not no one walks the same path, right? Everyone's different. You know what I mean? Everyone has a different mentality. So, like, I feel like you have to take every bit of advice with a grain of salt when someone's like, hey, you need to do this or do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I always try to, like, um, I always try to just feel like what what I feel is right, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with that until I learn different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. I, yeah, and this is not, kind of sounds cliche and cheesy, but actions speak louder than words. Yeah. And if I can learn s something from the next person, bro, my mind is like a sponge, and I'll just absorb the knowledge and respect the OGs. And yeah. Just, like, I have a lot of family members, bro, who are business owners, but they have we have the same mentality as far as like hustling and so anything that they tell me bro i just sit there and i just listen with a grain of salt bro because they're the ogs and they're the people that i grew up they've experienced more they, you know they, what I'm life saying? experience yeah. too man um but yeah that that's dope man um we have another question uh what would you say your top five dead or alive are mm, this is tough um top five dead or alive so <clears throat> I'm a big like underground dude, man. Like the like the whole reason I even started rap, um, me and my boy Romello, like I was saying, we were big on this dude Young Jinsu. So I would be lying if I said he wasn't in my top five just because like all like no matter what he drops, like I just support that shit, you know. Um, but uh, man, that's a tough question. I'd have to say Nips in there. Mm -hmm. um, I love Meek. Meek's one of my top top artists. Um, Oh shit, man! It's the top five dead or alive. It's just tough to. It's, it's super hard when you like when you don't have a chance to think about it, right? We just put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that shit is so tough to me. Um, yeah, I would say like I could say those three artists are definitely in there, but I I, I don't know like between the other two, I I couldn't. There's just so many, yeah, so many so great many, artists. Yeah, like I, I would say something right now and then hit you back after the podcast yeah. and be when like, you, yeah, when you're on your way home, like this. thinking about it, like, yeah. damn it. Yeah. I have kind of a controversial idea or question. Do you guys think Biggie and Pac would be as popular as they are? P 
Tupac. If they're still alive, do you think so? They're <clears throat> they're legendary status. They're in everyone's top five. If they were still alive, do you think that they would still be in people's Most top definitely. five? Most yeah. definitely, yeah. I would think so because, like we were saying earlier, like uh, the music with the meaning and shit. Like that's just that's timeless music. Like I still find myself listening to Pac and Big. Um, yeah. So I feel like that shit means more than just like, like, like I said, like the summer song for that year. Like that shit ain't gonna be around forever mm-hmm. but right. like the Pac songs like i feel like he was always coming from the heart big too and so yeah. i feel like that shit lasts you know the reason why i asked though is like a lot of people don't put like snoop dogg or ice cube or dre on their top five I f- what if they pass before they hit their prime do you think they'd be idolized oh, that's yeah. fair that is fair you, you, i just wonder because i feel like method man red man what are they doing now they're still making music one of them is on uh He's hosting the TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are doing. Uh, Snoop Dogg has his own Twitch channel. He's gaming and streaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I just don't understand. I'm not saying that Pac and Big aren't top five. It's just they always get put in the top five, but yet they they pass so young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I wonder that, if they were still around, if it would still be the same. That what if question? Well, yeah. What's crazy? I think like I think Pac was like 25 when he died or some shit. Young bro. Yeah, and, and Biggie, to think like I'm that age now. And to think like everything he's done and like at that by the time he was there, oh man, like that shit's uncomparable. Like I just feel like that shit's still yeah, yeah, legendary. That. Yeah, you that, know what the I'm rise was crazy, man. Yeah, so much content, so many like popping like what turned to be hit songs, but like so much hits and all like at that young, like I don't know, it's just it's crazy, man. Yeah. And experience everything he experienced too. That yeah, actually that is actually kind of wild to think about that he was so young and twenty five. Yeah, you don't even think about that, right? Because there is so much content and like you see all the videos of him doing all this crazy shit and like accumulating all this wealth. Yeah. He was a young man, yeah. and it happened an, so quick. An actor mm-hmm. too. Uh, he went, to, bro. It's crazy because he was in jail for a minute too, and yeah. all these roadblocks and yeah, and still yeah. pushed through. I think that's that type of shit. Why, like, if he were to if he were to be alive still, like, he, obviously he had a passion and and. I think, and the drive to get through, push it all through. Like, I think that he would still be popping and relevant for yeah. sure. Yeah, most definitely. I think so. I think there's no, yeah, I think there's no. I think no... he'd be like a Jay Z. I think he would own businesses. I think uh, he'd, yeah. he'd be a billionaire, bro. I yeah. think he would, I mean, before he passed, he was talking about Death Row East and Death Row West mm-hmm. and wanting to start these like charities or record labels for like the underprivileged and stuff like that, man. And, I don't know. I just my mind just w- went there because I never hear people say like the legends who are still alive in their top five. Yeah, yeah. So, and I just kind of that's why feel... it's hard for me to like separate that because like I don't know, man. No, like definitely. it's hard. It's hard to not put the, the the people who aren't here anymore in the top. Yeah, that's true. I I personally would say Biggie, Jay Z, Wayne, Nipsey. Wayne too. He got to be in my top. This too, might man. sound crazy too, but I probably would put Drake in my top five too, man. As far yeah. as just influence and trends and just what he's done so far and he's still pretty young too he's yeah. still in his 30s yeah he's gone crazy for sure what would you say lalo oh, that's so tough for me bro um, it is an open-end question though yeah like, right because everyone has their own opinion so like yeah um i would put method man in there bro i love method man so Ooh. much bro meth mm-hmm. is crazy um i you have to i would put Pac. i love i love Pac so much bro he's always in the playlist mm-hmm. um I love, uh, jay-z where am I? That's what's up? Four, five, four, three. three? Damn, three. bro. Yeah. Pac, um, um those last two. That's what. Yeah, it yeah, gets right. Tough, they man. Get, get you stuck. Um, yeah. As far as like, and then like you could go and like what they're doing outside the rap game. So you could you could throw in like a Nipsey Hustle. Nipsey. Well, yeah, yeah. So in, so influential. So so next level, bro. Yeah. Um, and then uh, shit, bro. I don't know. Would you put M in top five? I, I could, you could, you could definitely I make the case for it, bro. I, I mean, you could for yeah, sure. most definitely. Maybe that's an easy one, yeah. Just yeah. You throw what? If I get a, M's in there, boom. I beat yeah. myself up a lot because I I didn't get tapped into Nipsey until like his late career, bro. Mm. And it sucks, man, because he, bro, he was so t- he's he is so talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, same with Mac, bro. Like I I've listened to Mac Miller a lot, bro, but I actually never saw him live in concert. And uh, the, me either. He he was going on his swimming tour, bro, and I was gonna go to that. He had a, a stop in Boise. Yeah. And unfortunately, he passed before then, man. But things like that, man. Those little moments. Yeah, for real, man. Uh, I'm a big Mac fan too, and I wish I could have experienced one of his concerts or something like that mm-hmm. as well. But I loved Mac, bro, since like ninth grade when I was getting into rap. Um, I remember like 
Best Day Ever was on my playlist. Like, I Same, just I fucked with that song so tough, man. Still to this day. Um, but Damn. yeah, man. And Nip, as far as Nip, I uh, I actually, there was an app. Have you ever heard of My Mixtapes app? Probably. Yeah. Sounds so familiar. Like, there's an app called My Mixtapes. Shout out My Mixtapes. Um, they they uh, used to put on like a whole bunch of dope music, man, to where like you didn't have to. Uh, and this was when I was like a broke kid in high school and shit. So you didn't have to like do the month to month Spotify, iTunes shit. You could just have like the dope, the dope uh, mixtapes that were coming out. They would put on my mixtapes. And so like I remember when uh, Mailbox Money, Nips Mailbox Money came out. Me and my boys got onto that from that app, and we just went crazy to it. Like that, that fucking project is crazy. I don't know if you've heard it, but I if not, been. I would listen to that shit front to back. I Easy. definitely will. Yeah, for so sure. It, it was kind of like Dat Piff then. That app yeah, it's kind of like Dat Piff. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, but I used to be on Dat Piff all the fucking time. Just yeah, true, true, true. I used to yeah. World Star what, back yeah. when they used to have like the fight shit. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah. I remember bro. getting home and like they're po- posting a new fucking fight video all and, the time, bro. I used to be on LimeWire, LimeWire all the time. Oh man, bro. the dial-up oh. internet and shit. Oh, don't just take killing back the computer, bro. Yeah, all the viruses on computer. Yeah, that shit. Was used crazy. to be able to put like fifty songs on a CD, bro. Oh, bro, that was the, the shit. Yeah, my mm. uncle. Shout out my uncle. He used to, bro, he used to send me like anything I want on the CD, bro. Movies and albums, <laughs> <laughs> anything I wanted, bro. He got me. Yo, man. shout out to LimeWire, bro. Shout out to LimeWire. Nate, what would you say your top five are? I can't put them in order, so I'm just going to spitball. Like, you can rearrange it yourselves, but definitely Mac. I want to say Kendrick. I don't mm-hmm. know how you guys feel about Kendrick, but I would say Kendrick's in there. When I heard good one, bro. When, when I, when I heard uh, Good Kid, Mad City, dude, I like my soul ascended from my body. Yeah, that's true. Um, I would throw Drake in there, too. I definitely. like Drake. I, I like Drake. And then um, I'd have to come back to you on the other two. But definitely... Uh, like the last Mac, two. Yeah, the last two, man. You Kendrick, life changing. Good kid, Mad City. Um, changed my life, bro. Nate, yeah. I can't get over your mustache. Nate, bro. your your mustache <laughs> is changing my life, bro. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> good stash, mad. It's a something. Good stash, good mad, stash Nate. mad Nate. Yes, sir, Mad Nate. Boom. So we do have a couple topics. I want to shift gears here. Um, Mayweather, Logan Paul. Oh uh, yeah. What do y'all think, man? It. <clears throat> I didn't personally pay for the shit, and I'm so glad. <laughs> Good I job. Didn't. Good job. Um, yeah, that shit was I wet. tried to pay for it. To be fair, Showtime was down though. The app was for some reason not wanting to work across the world. Yeah. It didn't work for a bunch of people. They weren't ready for all that activity, bro. Yeah, they weren't ready. What'd That's you think crazy. about the fight, bro? Uh, man, I wasn't too happy with it. Uh, I mean, it was cool to see Mayweather get back out there because obviously, like, I feel like uh, I feel like boxing is getting so much crazy, like light right now like yeah as far mm-hmm. as like with the young people and shit and so i feel like he deserved it as mm-hmm. far as like he deserved a moment like that some but, brand new eyes on him yeah like so yeah like to be looked at as like the best boxer of all time i feel mm-hmm. like he deserved that platform for sure for sure he yeah. does, but uh yeah. but i feel like the fight was trash yeah yeah it was it was weird bro i, I everyone's like well he didn't knock him out my bro but logan paul was like 35 pounds heavier than him too like there's there's a lot of that goes into it. it's not always that easy yeah right? no yeah most definitely um i think what made it so trash too was like i don't know man i just feel like no one was really going for that knockout yeah blow. for like, sure logan like going, was but he like got playing <laughs> dangerously like logan? i know i know you're not gonna get mayweather to, to play dangerously yeah but yeah like, Logan should have been out there dropped. trying to knock his head off. After he should have got dropped and made us all happy. Round, for real. <laughs> yeah. When they rang the bell for the 10 second count, Logan went fucking. Oh, that flurry he threw. Yeah, bro, that's Oh, that shit was crazy. He didn't even connect on any, but he tried, though. You got to give it to him for trying. Man. I think it would have been a different fight if it was an actual, like, professional bout as opposed to an exhibition. Because, yeah. like Floyd said after the fight, he's like, we were having fun in there, man. Like, I had so much fun in this fight. Yeah. Which is cool, you know, whatever, but, like, you know, like I said, it would have been a different case if it was an actual professional bout for his on his record. I personally wasn't mad at the fight. Yeah. Because I didn't go in with expectations. That's I also fair. didn't pay for it. But I honestly I was excited to see something happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it didn't happen doesn't mean I was like let down. But I I honestly I thought Logan really tried. I thought he busted his ass out there. Yeah, like, for sure. He bro. did what he knew he that he did what he knew. And You I, guys saw the like the press conference when the shit went crazy 
Were you talking about after the oh, fight or so before? So like when when Jake was like, "I got your hat." Oh yeah, like, got your hat. Oh, yeah. Got your hat. Yeah, he was acting like a child. Well, uh, got your hat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that shit was, and he sounded like he was crying at one point. That was his. Uh-huh. Bro- that was his brother. Oh, yeah, though. Bro. That was Jake, not Logan. No, no, yeah, but yeah. my thing was like when when all that went down and like the I don't know like shit got crazy like. Floyd was saying, oh, I'll kill that motherfucker. I'll kill him. Like, I'll I'll go. Yeah. like, he seemed yeah. like, yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't looking like he was Shit trying changed. To, he didn't look like that same guy in there. And I, I thought, like, he would bring, because, man, these dudes have been talking crazy to a lot of fighters. And, like, a lot of people want to see them, uh, you know, go against yeah. someone that will actually give them, give them a run for their money, like, do something, da- damage them, you know? Yeah, for sure. And so, like, I feel like we at least wanted Floyd to damage him. It didn't seem like mm-hmm. that happened. No, not at all. Yeah. But yeah, that's, yeah, dude. And then <laughs> after that, got your hat, bro. And then, and then it's funny because, like, they're not used to that world, right? The the Paul brothers. And they had, like, higher extra security because they really thought they were going to die. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, I've seen bro. that. Yeah. yeah. That's what happens, man. You can't be man. playing with people like that. And I it sold of, the fight because I heard that Jake wasn't allowed to go. And then he was there. Yeah. So. Bro, Jake Makes was you wonder. all yacked out, bro. He was on. He was like, <laughs> like when they cut to him, bro. He was probably on Molly or something. Bro, shit, I got, bro. I, I got the funniest video to show you guys after this uh, <laughs> yeah, about Jake. Yeah, Jake bro, Paul was acting fool. Honestly, full. I think people are saying that Mayweather could have. Uh, he pretended or he didn't knock out knock out Logan on purpose. I feel like that, maybe that's a good thing, bro. Like you can really hurt someone. You could really give someone. Some yeah, damage. It's, what Mayweather's capable of, bro. I feel like he he could have gave someone brain damage, bro. Like with yeah, how that's true. And there has been people who haven't woke up in the ring. Mm-hmm. So exactly, I, I could bro. see that fear too. Like you I don't wouldn't think want no to animate his life. To, no one wanted that to be the outcome. No, nah, yeah, no, nah. that's that's fair. Actually, that's super fair because like when you're coming against someone who's considered the go, really. Like he's so there's so much precision to his boxing skill. Like he, I, you're right. He really could have heard. Imagine him. the conversation. But, but at the same time, having. man, these guys are playing with this. That's shit, bro. that's this also is, true. This is too. what this that's this is what this sport is. And like, like he didn't give a shit when he knocked Ben. Like I, I, I oh, guarantee he, he wanted to knock Ben. You know, yeah, like uh-huh. that's true. like you can't you yeah, can't to, go in there and be like, man, I'm a YouTuber. Don't kill me. But <laughs> I'm gonna try to kill you. You know, yeah, like, to be devil's ad- advocate, they definitely des- deserve to get knocked the fuck out. Yeah, you know? that's what I think. But yeah. imagine what we'd be talking about right now if Logan never get, got back up from that fight. Sucks to suck. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think that'd be the energy, bro. Uh, everyone, would I think be it would be kind of that's true. It'd be kind of down. Well, it would it would it would instantly stop any YouTuber trying to fight true. a professional fighter. It would true. dead it right there. Yeah. Because what about of what you, happened. Nate? What do you think? You were telling me that you love Logan Paul. Your idol? <laughs> you said I, you were the third Paul brother. Yeah, you are. That Nate was a Paul. joke. Oh, my bad, bro. That wasn't Nate me. Paul. That was Lala. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. <laughs> you pulled up listening to that every day, bro. Damn. I did. I did one time. I just did. one time, I though, did. dude. No, but did you watch the fight? Uh, no, but I've seen snippets. Why oh. were they hugging so much? Yeah. You have to do that to survive, bro. Yeah. To be fair, I, I think so. Mayweather was hugging a lot too. That's I, don't think a, that, I think that, that's the impression I was getting. I, mm. It's like they were trying, to, like last minute, being like bro ears. I honestly don't know. I what think was they going got on. humbled. Honestly. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I, you could tell Mayweather. And Mayweather said he was a lot better than he thought he was. Gonna yeah, be, yeah, so. for sure. I thought he was too. I thought Mayweather looked kind of. Small, I think he bro. looked way better because uh, I remember when I was first seeing Logan hit the bag. Man, he just looked like he said he, in his own words, like uncoordinated, like just yeah. like, kind of goofy. And uh, he looked like he had a lot better form and shit. I feel like Mayweather looks slim, bro. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I, he, I, don't, I don't feel like he took it very serious. Like he, when you watch the thing, the doc that they had on Showtime, like he was tra- he was training like once a week. Yeah, he was just being a grandfather, like hanging out with his grandkids, like hanging out at his strip club, promoting his businesses. Yeah, know? so he he just wasn't there mentally. Isn't mm-hmm. it crazy? He was he was promoting his uh, strip club. Yeah, <laughs> sorry bro. for the audio. With such listeners. a big platform, y'all heard that yeah. at the time too. He's just promoting. That yeah, shit. and that's what's crazy to me, like that he looked so good still and sharp and was and it's it's muscle memory at this point like he wasn't yeah. even training hard you know what i mean he was in yeah. there once a week hitting the bag or hitting mitts here and there yeah and still so fucking sharp bro yeah i think I so think it crazy. says according to sportingfree.com paul is expected to receive a 250,000 base salary plus 10 percent of pay-per-view shares um Mayweather, and they sold like one mil damn 10 percent of that bro he made 350,000 off that fight um, but but Mayweather, Mayweather. yeah. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about that. Uh, uh, he can make as much. Oh, so they're saying the YouTube star suggested in the May 11th interview with TMZ that he could be he can make as much as 20 million from the fight. Best on his based on his estimation, 
that would mean the fight ranks in at least two hundred million. So if the fight got two hundred million in pay per view sales, made twenty million dollars. Logan would have made twenty yeah. million off that. Let's see about Mayweather though. He, he um, scraped in fifty percent. Mayweather, Mayweather was guaranteed a hundred or ten million in base salary and fifty percent of pay per view. <laughs> Bro, Mayweather bro. got that fucking Raped bag, bro. That's what happened when you're A-side, bro. You do shit like that, you, bro. You should pull up an image from when after the fight. He, dude, he had the biggest smile on his face. Because he doesn't fight, like, whether he lost or won or not, he got a bag. Yeah. $35 million for 12 rounds or $100 million for six rounds. There's a big difference. Oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah, I would crazy. be happy too, man. I I would be. Look to at say this. you went the distance with yeah. Mayweather, so bro, we do have you, some like, videos. Come on, let's go, bro. Um, yeah, yeah that would be fire. You want to put the laptop on the TV so we can all see this? So they're saying that Floyd accidentally knocked him out. It could be the case. It does look like he carried him a little right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's what I'm, that's My good. question is though: is what does that do for the fight? If it ends in the fourth round or the eighth round, it doesn't mean that there's more money, right? Oh, no, no. So why would he hold them up to make the fight last longer? Is my question. Because there's this huge conspiracy saying that Floyd accidentally. I feel like he went off script. They're saying. Yeah, I feel like there's a. I don't know, man. Like, the, like this know. conspiracies are crazy because they'd be saying shit like, "Well, you know, like Floyd made such a crazy bag that he can easily like." Offered the the Paul team like yo a little bit of money like you sh don't go for that knockout I won't knock you out we'll go the distance and we, and everyone oh, okay. will be happy you know what I'm saying so like, I mean, yeah like maybe they were in cahoots with each other for the you, whole deal yeah yeah you may never know man especially when there's that much money be pull, yeah. being pulled in it's like if I'm Floyd I'm not I, there's no chance I'm letting this guy knock me Hell out and no. doing everything I've done give him a little bit of bread we both eat like you may never know it's just possible it also makes Logan look better because he didn't get knocked out. Yeah. So it looks better for his boxing career. So what yeah. if that was like Mayweather was, or they were like, I'll give you 50% of pay-per-view sales if you don't. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he like slid him 50%. Like, I don't hey, know if you told me that or I had a conversation with someone who told me that. But yeah. that does actually make that sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, don't knock me out for eight rounds. Make it seem like I'm actually a boxer. I'll only take 10% of sales. Mm -hmm. You take the 50 Damn, I think Mayweather would do that for the bag. Oh, easily would he would? Yeah, do that. man, Who wouldn't? Crazy, Bro, like, he fucking yeah. had Bitcoin, or he had. Uh, he was promoting. Uh, there's another type of uh, cryptocurrency, not Doge or not Bitcoin. It's uh, it's like a uh, Ethereum or something. Oh yeah, 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 Ethereum. His belt had it. Ethereum Mayweather.com. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, how about and then he had only he had only no he had Fashion Nova on his fucking. His gallon big thing, bro. Big sponsors, and I, and I think bro. Uh, Logan Paul had a Pokemon card. Yeah, he came out with that Charizard. That yeah, was that yeah, PSA yeah. 10 Charizard that on his neck, like, bro. I think that, that card is worth like $100,000 or $100, some crazy shit like that, no, bro. Hey, that, that, the, yeah. the card alone is worth three hundred and seventy. dollars Yeah, there you go. Yeah, PSA 10. Like, he's I think like, first since 10. I wore this shit to the Mayweather fight, this is a million dollar card. It's true. Yeah. Bro, that chain low key is probably worth more than a lot of rappers' chains. Like, oh, yeah. His Charizard just card? Just with the Charizard, yeah, not bro. even the actual medallion or pendant. Like, that shit's probably worth a lot That's a more. That's a big flex, bro. Than, like, a big-ass fucking little pump chain or something. <laughs> or Trippy yeah. Reds. Uh, he, he had that ball with the spikes on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. That shit was ugly. But, yeah, so, yeah, it was. Waste of money, too, bro. Where did these niggas be at when they said so they it says, the whole head. fight was a money grab. Some of y'all wasted your $50. Look at all cry. Hmm. <laughs> But that, <laughs> I didn't waste none. This is what I was talking about. This clip right here. Not a lot of <laughs> he literally, Yo, he's he's swinging with everything he got. Stuff. This is, bro. This that was you, round that's one what makes too. Makes you think, like uh, man, he really was going. But he got winded after that, though. Oh yeah, my man's just tired. <laughs> he's just flurrying, bro. That's the thing too. Everyone was talking about that. Sure, Logan can train all he wants, but what he doesn't got that Mayweather has is the endurance. Yeah. <laughs> bro said this. <laughs> this is this is Logan, bro. To Mayweather. <laughs> What's the whole thing, man? Like that was like my biggest concern. Like with the whole Logan Paul fight was like that. Not even like Conor McGregor like lasted all the rounds. You know what I mean? He got tired and he he fights professionally all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, I don't think that Logan got it in the lungs to make this fight. Logan, yeah. to be fair too, bro, he didn't sit down all eight rounds. Yeah, he stood up the whole time. He stood up the mm -hmm. whole time, bro. I'm like, bro, you know you're tired. Just, <laughs> just sit, sit down, just man. Sit down, bro. Yeah, he crazy. And nobody that. cares that much. All right, what else do we got, Lolo? Um, yeah, and then like I saw this other thing, like, and it's crazy, like that now there's like a YouTuber versus TikTok like fight oh, card yeah. too, like that's on Saturday, bro. We're like. What do you? What really? are your thoughts? Yeah. What are your yeah, thoughts bro, on like this on this is, shit, bro? I forgot about that until you just said yeah, it. What do you think about that shit, bro? So. uh 
I think it's like Austin McBroom, right? Yeah, and uh-huh. he's fighting or, like uh, some, Bryce, some some shit. Yeah, some Bryce kid, and uh, the kid Bryce is a fucking douchebag, man, bro. Man, both these guys get on my nerves. Yeah. But, uh, Man, I think I honestly think it would be hilarious if Bryce knocks this guy out, bro. Yeah, but but I, but I I don't think it's gonna happen. I no. think I think bro's gonna get him. So YouTube's Austin Austin McBroom and TikTok's Bryce. That's how there you go. What a yeah. what a fucking title! YouTube's Austin McBroom and TikTok's Bryce Hall. Yeah, man. the battle of the platforms it said right there, bro. That's insane. Like, man, it's kind of cool in a sense that like it is. It's oh, like it's like reviving that. the sport of boxing, mm-hmm. um, which is cool, but like. Right, it's it's a shame that that people are tuning in, like these kids and the younger generations tuning into this. They're not seeing actual boxers box. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're, pro- they're probably only tap in to see these guys whenever they want. Yeah. Throw what, what do you guys think? Does this shit ruin the sport, or does it like really help it? I think it. I think it's. Um, it could go both ways. I think. Yeah. I think ultimately it's, it's it's gonna ruin the sport because. I would I would say it would help if they had actual fighters on the card, right? Mm-hmm. Because then you're giving exposure to actual boxers who do this thing, the thing for real. But it's this whole card is just a bunch of YouTube and TikTokers. My problem is like if people keep getting dropped because there's so much of a gap between like this guy can actually fight and this uh-huh. guy can't. Like he just got followers, and they get like all that like you get all that adrenaline rush from seeing a dude get dropped mm-hmm. so many times, and then you go to like the real top notch guys and like. They don't, you know, that shit goes the distance a lot of times because these guys are top tier. Yeah. You know, they know how to they know how to do that. I and, see uh, it from a few perspectives. Yeah, I feel like it could damage it being being on base. Like, pe- like a lot of people oh, are gonna yeah. want that fucking that shock knockout. value. Yeah, okay, yeah. I feel what you're saying, then, bro. Like, then when you watch the actual fight, yeah, you they're watch, gonna get they're gonna attack, they're gonna get bored. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, that. I can see that for so sure. So the way I see it, so I think it's good and bad. I think the good in it is the money, the revenue, the entertainment value. Also, our not our kids quite yet because they're not that this age. But mm-hmm. the teenagers are they they die for they these, for shit these up, guys. Mm. And I feel like it could influence people because, bro, if the, if you look right now, the yeah. number one most wanted job is a YouTuber. Uh, if that could actually get transitioned into like an athlete because of this and recruit them, I feel like it could be good for, or used That's for true. a good thing. Bro. Oh, that is true. Yeah. If you think about like the like the <laughs> army and stuff, bro. The they army and the that. military, man, this is like a deep cut. They pay uh, Hollywood and let them use like their tanks and their armies and all that stuff because kids watching that, they see that and get influenced and want to be in the army. Mm. So I see it could be kind of a good thing and influence the next generation to not want to just be entertainers for YouTube, but boxing. All right. That's true. Because it does take a lot of uh, athleticism and training and all that stuff. But this does uh, tarnish the, the yeah. brand of boxing because I don't respect it at this point, man. No, well, I guess that's uh, to touch on that too. Yeah, like, back and f- I see both ways to touch on that too. Like, it's also awesome to open so many different avenues to become an athlete or, or a professional, yeah. You know, like if you could make it through YouTube, like, I mean, they're fucking doing it, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's I think yeah. that's awesome, man. Yeah. It's, it's the future, really. Yeah. Like, there's that dude on, I don't know if you've seen him on YouTube, um, destroying. He's like on his way to, um, he's making his way into the NFL. Oh wow! He was like a kicker in college, but his YouTube got so big that the college he was making money. Like you, either you forfeit your YouTube, or you you leave college. And he's like, well, I'll just That's do it on so my own. Funny you said. I was just gonna say because my sister in law made this comment. She's like, how come no other sport is doing this? Only boxing and fighting is mm-hmm. letting these entertainers go into their professional sport. How come they're not taking YouTubers and putting them in the NBA for one one day? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you, what you just said, that's actually pretty dumb. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, he forfeit his or he left college, fuck all his scholarships, and now he's just like on his way, like making these YouTube videos, challenging and going one on one with a lot of NFL like retired receivers and current receivers. Like, and he'll play corner on them and stuff. It's fucking sick. Mm. It's super entertaining. So we got YouTube versus TikTok. They got a little, little well, the, trailer the promo, right here, bro. Making it all deep. Oh, God damn. Let me see this. Bryce Hall, Team TikTok. <laughs> He's going to get dropped, bro. You just team can't. YouTube. What a title, bro. My whole life I've trained for this. I'm here to rep TikTok. I'll be with a bunch of TikTokers ready to take on a bunch of YouTubers. You know, YouTubers have a different mentality. TikTokers, I feel like, you know, been around only for about a year or so. I don't even see from time. Yeah, right? <laughs> YouTubers have a different fight mentality. <laughs> Oh, How about you come over here and do some shit? I feel like they're all washed up. Let's fight on the water. I'm at my prime right now, buddy. I got a lot of weight on my shoulders. I live for these moments. I'm really doing it for not only myself, but for my fans and my family. I'm looking for the first round knockout. 
Okay, I didn't all know there right. was all hey, this, now, bro. Hold yeah, up, yeah. hold up, hold up, hold the phone. You tell I me got you my got money on Michael Jarvis. Lee, bro. I got my money on Michael. What the fuck is this? Yo, bro? but <laughs> what's this lineup? Okay, hold up. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Tanner Fox, Faze Jarvis. All right, make your picks, bro. I don't know who the fuck these are, right. but make yeah, your picks. Yeah, neither do I. Uh, I, don't, I don't give a fuck, bro. I got Tanner. <laughs> Yeah, I got, my boy Tanner. I got all YouTubers, bro. They've been what, around long. Uh-huh. TikTokers <laughs> are only a year old, bro. <laughs> Why don't you come over here and do some shit? Uh, yeah, I don't, weird, I don't. I'm man. not familiar with yeah. any of the TikTokers. The only, the only so person I, I know, the only person I know is Deji, and he fought uh, Jake Paul. Who's Deji? He's a uh, oh, he's Deji. Yeah, Deji. Yeah, he's his and his brother is KSI, who beat Logan Paul. Okay. And and had a draw with them. But yeah, Deji can box. I, I think he's for sure going to knock that Vinny what dude out. What about my boy Ryland Storms? Yeah, look at him, bro. What about my boy Archie Storms? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Archie. This is wild, bro. Yeah, bro. Look, it's yeah, a whole fucking deal, bro. Look at it. Bet on me because I am going to drop the f- out of a 30-year-old man come June 12th. You're what, 25? It's just, an, it's so cringe that he can't turn off his, like, TikTok personality. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to knock the shit out of a 25-year-old, 35-year-old man. Well, that's the model. Oh, man. I can't believe you. All right, boys. That. Pack your bags to Florida. We're going, bro. Watching Shoot. it live. Thank that you, Patreon, for funding this trip. I'm going to show them that a TikToker can make it big. Okay. <laughs> that's cool, bro. All I need is a minute to knock you out. Just like who's TikTok. Gonna be on that, who I was going to get knocked out on that fight card, if anyone. I hope they knock each other out at the same time. Damn, the double knockout? Both Let's go. Both knocked out. Bro, but so it says uh, there will be a number of musical performances from DJ Khaled, Lil Baby, huh. Migos, Trippy Red, and more. Typical. See, I think that that whole uh, trailer, like when the way the way trailer threw the Jake Paul event compared mm-hmm. to the way they did Showtime and uh, Logan, man, that shit was crazier. I feel like- You when, like trailers? Oh, man, that yeah. shit was crazy. They had the performances. They had Snoop, which made that shit even more- uh-huh. Snoop was sure. hilarious, Man, he was bro. hilarious. Made that shit even more popping. That's true. That's um, true. Yeah, and I then like, Jake just got, I think he got bought out of his tri- Triller fight deal, and he, he's doing he's some Showtime. shit with Showtime. Showtime. shit for real? Yeah, yeah. Damn. I, I do like the Triller, because it was a whole event, right? It, it's, like I said, once again, it's like, it's almost, it's the future of the sport. Mm. And I, it's, I think they will sell more and get more eyes and more asses in the seats with those events. Like, I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. To, to revitalize they it. Yeah, they definitely are bringing the, the younger generation. To revive the sport, it, dude. Yeah. Hopefully they capitalize on it, man, and hopefully they do. They do right by it. Yo, I just been seeing Jake Paul, like, and because I, I see Canelo's name right there. Jake Paul's been talking all this shit to Canelo, bro, and it's fucking insane oh, man. to me. Bro. I'll, I'll, like, Canelo, <laughs> man, do it. Just, just fight yeah. me, Canelo. Fight me. Who's that? Yeah, I, I make way more than you. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Jake Paul, please, yeah, bro. For real, enough. Mm-hmm. I just, I couldn't imagine like disrespecting a legend, in the, a current legend in the sport like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I we're like. I, I, I just it doesn't make any sense to me, bro. Like yeah. to have the mentality, like I yeah. could, I could never. I, could I never. guess I get. I don't know. Like I guess like a lot of times that's how people get their shot is by fucking you have that big you mouth, know, having that big mouth. Yeah, but I mean it's usually actual fighters. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean yeah, Conor McGregor did it that way. He had yeah. a fucking big mouth saying he was fucking gonna kill everybody, but that motherfucker could fight though. Yeah, exactly. Two division champ. So what's up with this, Nate? Our last topic of of the episode so you want to talk about it i'd love to talk about it so what i'm about to pull up on screen is um have you guys heard about the student a student who uh was denied his graduation uh his high school diploma because he wore a mexican flag to Mm. his graduation i did hear a little bit about that bro which is something that he earned bro to make it even to piss me off even more bro (laughs) so crazy So this is the video right here. If you guys can see, this guy has, he's representing his heritage. He has his the Mexican flag. It's his culture, man. As you can see right here, they kind of, they're kind of oh, yeah. talking about it right there. And it's just kind of holding up the, uh, the lines of it. Damn. And he walks off. That's crazy. That's so disrespectful. Mm. 
That doesn't sit right with me, man. And they're 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 saying that the reason why they did that is because it, it doesn't uh, meet their dress code. That's so like fucking that. annoying, bro. Uh, let the kid have his fucking moment, man. He's been working his whole at this point in his life. He's been working bro, his whole gonna, life for if that. If they're gonna take his diploma for that, like my boy uh, Dino, when he was doing the walk, this fool threw up crit. <laughs> and it's like, bro, you know, like, come on, like, they gonna, I don't know, this shit's just crazy to me that they did that though. I mean, there is an update though. It sucks that this had to happen, and I feel like they only gave him his diploma because it went viral and the school. This happened in Texas, or this happened in uh, North, Ashboro High School in North in Carolina. North Carolina. Mm. That makes sense, and uh, doesn't it? Yeah, I do. I do want to point out too that, um, like you were saying, it was the dress code. According, uh, you know, they had to make a statement after uh, someone recorded it, and he and you know he he made a fuss about it or whatever they want to call it. Uh, out of all things, I heard he got arrested briefly, what? briefly because of that for whatever reason. Damn, I, bro. I now I could be wrong. Um, he probably threw up crip. Shout out to Dino. <laughs> no, but no, there is there is an update. Four days later, he actually did get his diploma. Um, I actually, this is a, a video, a message from him. Actually, let me see. Let's oh, hear advertisement. Stuff. No free money. So how no you guys free doing? Money. Did you guys hear about the other? I think he was a rapper. I can't remember from what state, but he threw ten bands while he graduated, Shit. and he got arrested. Actually. <laughs> Why are they yeah. arresting these kids at graduation? I think for like bro? disturbing yeah. the peace or some sort of oh, enticing. That's so annoying, man. Let, the, or something. let these kids fucking live. Like I said, at this point in their lives, they've been working their whole lives for this shit, bro. That's all. Like in high school, that's all you think about. Like I can't yeah. wait to graduate, man. Be done with this. Yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. And then they're gonna <laughs> fucking imagine getting arrested at graduation, bro. Bro, like, that'd be that'd come be on, horrible. man. You supposed to. Have so Your this family right comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so quality. Oh, this guy's actually signed a QC. That's a trip. Quality controls Metro Mars detained for throwing 10,000 during high school <laughs> That's graduation. That's so sick, bro. Holy shit. Could you imagine that, bro? That sucks, man. That's unfortunate. Uh, they attempting to start a riot. Oh, but on. the way we view it. We got two, two things playing at once. There we go. Come on, Nate. Get it together, man. They said for I'm attempting sorry. to start a right. Sorry, yeah, it's actually crazy. it's my fingers over here. <laughs> here we go. They tried to charge you for, with in attempting to start a riot, yeah. but the way what? we view it, you was just trying to share the love. For real, like, I was just trying to share the love. You know what I'm saying? To the seniors, give back because we've been in a pandemic for like over a year, so we really Facts. been able to see each other. So. I was just trying to give back to my Imagine being able to throw 10 bands as a at graduation. As a senior. Bro. Bro. I think, I think Wiz said something, something about like money. pulling up <laughs> to his prom <laughs> so and his so shit like was playing at that time because like when he was grad mm. or when he was about to graduate or some shit, like he was already buzzing. So I just think about that. I'm like, that shit would be crazy. Bro. Could you imagine that, bro? No, nah, not really. Yeah, you're seeing your prom <laughs> is, and it's your songs they're playing, bro. Yeah, That's insane that to me. Nuts. Bro, look at this. All right, this is it. He legit got detained. <laughs> Damn. Man, like... Go do something better, bro. Y'all tag Shade in the comments. It's all good, man. They, I, I heard that they uh, they all scrounged up the money and then went and bailed them out. Oh, that's hilarious. No, I'm playing, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I bet that. That's hilarious, bro. Wow. Man, like, imagine, like, I couldn't eat, like, a <laughs> <You're> an <laughs> asshole, bro. <laughs> Putting myself in the shoes of, like, the, those officers, like, I'm not going to do that shit, bro. Like, come, just yeah, get the hell bro, out of here. People are weird. I thought there was light at the end of the tunnel, bro. Yeah, no, nah, I don't yeah. know. No, but uh, it's dope, yeah. though, because uh, the 10000 that he, you know, gave to the crowd and all that, him getting arrested and whatnot, all the press he got from it, bro, mm. was way, it was yeah. worth way more oh, than 10 stacks, yeah. bro. Him being on the radio and us talking about it, him training on Twitter and Instagram, way more than 10,000 in promo, bro. Yeah, facts. Facts. But yeah, so we got this video right here um, of the kid who was denied his diploma. Did she tell you Hopefully why? there is some light at the end of the tunnel on this one. Um, yeah, because it was a consequence, basically, and it was, like she said again, violating the dress code, but I don't see the reason for that. The district has said that the diploma has been available since Friday. Did they contact you to let you know it was available or why did it take now and um, they didn't contact me they contacted my parents but um she didn't really like give a brief explanation of like how to come pick it up she just like told us to go pick it up but you know we didn't really want to um just get it like that we wanted all of all of y'all and everybody the whole community to watch me get it you know and 
standing here with your diploma in hand, how do you feel and what's the future hold for you? Well, like I said, it's not going to stop here. You know, we're going to keep fighting. Um, hopefully yeah. We make a big change. It's messed up, man. Um, <laughs> I mean, he did get his diploma. Um, and that's great. It's yeah. great. Oh, yeah. I guess there is some light at the end of the tunnel That's on true. this one. Came um, full circle. But we are going to be wrapping this episode up. Service Way yeah. Podcast, episode 35. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of content on the way from Young Knees. Oh, yes. Yeah, I appreciate y'all for having me. Definitely, for man. I appreciate you for, for joining us. Uh, where can we find your music? Yo, so you can find my music at youngknees.com. Of course, uh, at Young Knees on all social media platforms. I'll be posting my links and shit there. So, yeah, just tap in with the kid, man. Uh, big in. moves on the way. Tap in now because it's about to get crazy. Yeah, don't don't be a bandwagon fan in a year or two. <laughs> yeah. Do it now. Yeah. Work uh, with them in the mud. All right, then. We appreciate y'all. Uh, Surface Wave Podcast, episode 35. You guys can follow us on Instagram at Surface Wave Podcast. Sorry, audio there listeners. There it is again. One more time. <laughs> we out. Adobe. Adobe be trying to crash our oh, party. Oh, damn. Microsoft account problem. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry, Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, that's a sign. It's a sign, bro. All right. We love y'all. We'll see you, we'll see you guys next Monday. Peace. Later. Peace. Peace.